you know, the club of nations that can build their own stealth fighter, it is incredibly small. We're talking the US, China, Russia, and that's about it. But now it looks like a new contender wants to join that very exclusive list. Meet the TAI Khan, Turkey's incredibly bold and, let's be honest, very ambitious bid for air superiority. But here's the thing, its arrival on the scene brings up a huge question, and that's what we're here to unpack. On paper, this jet looks the part, but is the Kane really a true fifth generation fighter? Can it actually hang with the best of the best, you know, the F-35s and the J-20s of the world? So to even begin to answer that, we need to be clear on what we're talking about. Fifth generation isn't just some cool marketing slogan, it's a very specific checklist of capabilities. We mean top tier stealth, the ability to super cruise, that's flying supersonic without guzzling fuel on afterburners, plus next level avionics, sensor fusion that gives the pilot godlike awareness, and the ability to be a key player in a networked battlefield. This is a report card. This is what we're gonna judge the con against. Okay, so why on earth would a country take on such a monumental, eye-wateringly expensive task? Well, the Kashan wasn't just born out of thin air. Its origin story is this fascinating mix of national strategy, pure ambition, and frankly, geopolitical necessity. It really all boils down to two big things. First, Turkey's air force is built on a fleet of aging F-16s, and they desperately need an upgrade. But second, and this is the real kicker, Turkey was kicked out of the US-led F-35 program back in 2019. So faced with this huge capability gap, Ankara didn't just look for another supplier, they decided to double down and build their own. And you know what? They've moved surprisingly fast. The project got a major shot in the arm when the UK's BAE Systems came on board to help. And then, in February 2024, they hit this massive milestone. The prototype made its very first flight, and get this, a full year ahead of schedule. The goal now is to get these jets into service sometime in the 2030s. All right, so we've got the backstory. Now for the main event. Let's pull out that fifth generation checklist we talked about and really put the Catan to the test. How does the design on paper stack up against cold, hard reality? And this table right here, it really tells the whole story. Just look down that column on the right. Stealth, super cruise, advanced avionics, every single one of those critical features that makes a jet truly fifth gen is still listed as in development. The con has the perfect blueprint. The ambition is there, but the proven combat ready hardware well, it just isn't there yet. But hey, let's not downplay the ambition here. The designers are absolutely aiming for the stars. The target maximum speed for the Cathrian is Mach 1.8. That is a seriously impressive performance goal for any modern fighter jet. And just to put that into perspective for you, that Mach 1.8 target is actually faster than the F-35's top speed, which clocks in around Mach 1.6. This really shows that Turkey isn't just trying to build a good enough replacement, no. They're aiming to build a genuine, top-tier competitor. But, as we all know, having an ambitious blueprint is one thing. Actually turning that dream into a fleet of combat-ready jets? That's a whole different ballgame. The Kion program is staring at a steep uphill climb with some pretty significant real-world challenges dead ahead. And these hurdles are huge. First off, engine dependency is a major problem. The prototypes are flying with American engines, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of self-reliance. Then you've got systems integration. That's like trying to solve a massive three-dimensional puzzle while it's moving at the speed of sound. And of course, there's the astronomical cost and the simple truth that no jet is the real deal until it's been through the ringer in real-world operations. So yeah, the absolute heart of the matter is the engine. It's everything. Turkey is working on its own engine, but that technology is years, maybe even a decade, away from being ready. Until that day comes, the Khan's production, its performance, everything will depend on foreign suppliers. And that always comes with its own set of political strings attached. But here's the twist. Despite all these major hurdles, the Kakaran is already making waves far beyond Turkey. See, this project isn't just about domestic defense. It's about positioning Turkey as a major player in the global arms market. And there's already a ton of interest. We're talking nations from Pakistan and Indonesia to the UAE and even Ukraine have been taking a close look at the Kagan. For any country that can't, or maybe just won't, buy American or European jets, the Kagan could become a very, very attractive alternative. A ticket to fifth generation tech without the Western political baggage. Which brings us right back to our central question. And honestly, this quote just sums it all up perfectly. The Khan has the blueprint, it has the ambition, in theory it checks all the boxes. 
but that prestigious title of fifth generation isn't something you get for a good design. It's something you earn through proven, tested, and reliable capability. So as we wrap this up, this is the final thought I wanna leave you with. The Khan really is at a crossroads. Will Turkey manage to overcome these immense technological and financial hurdles to make it a new cornerstone of 21st century air power? Or will it end up as a cautionary tale of a project that just aimed a little too high? Right now, nobody knows for sure, but you can bet the world is watching.